God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. The nations rage. The kingdoms totter. He utters his voice. The earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come, behold the works of the Lord, how he has brought desolations on the earth. He makes war cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariots with fire. Be still, and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. I wonder what images or words from that video impacted you the most. For me, the words refuge and strength and fortress really resonated with my heart and soul. And I think that's because I need to know that kind of thing right now in our current situation. Maybe you do too, because the world we live in is something of a scary place. The coronavirus, COVID-19, is running rampant around the world, ruining lives all over the earth. As I speak, over a million people have been infected, and more than 53,000 people have lost their lives. Countries are closed, finances are failing, jobs have been lost, and people are feeling isolated, fearful, and perhaps despairing. So in the midst of this mess and madness, how can we find strength and security? I want to share with you some thoughts from a song, a song that's found in the Bible, uh, in a group of songs called the Psalms. There's 150 of them. I'm just going to talk about one today and just share with you two main thoughts from this song. The song is called Psalm 46, and the first thought from this song is that we need to seek refuge in God in times of crisis. The first part of this song says this, God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Now our world is clearly in trouble right now. Perhaps you would use a stronger word than trouble. But the original Hebrew that this was written in, the original Hebrew word for trouble means literally distress, cramped quarters, a constricted feeling. And I think there are a lot of people in our world, in our community, who are feeling that way right now. They're distressed. If they are uh, isolated at home, they're probably feeling like 
They're in cramped quarters, especially if they're in uh, a family. There may be people, perhaps yourself, who are feeling like they've got a constricted feeling in their heart, in their throat, in their chest, because they're, they're fearful about what the future holds. Whatever you're feeling, I want to say to you this morning that God wants to be your refuge and your strength. The word refuge here is a picture from the older part of the Bible known as the Old Testament. It's a picture of a shelter in which people would, would uh, find comfort and safety in the midst of a storm. Now in Australia, we know the power of severe storms, don't we? I mean, just back in February in Western Australia uh, and around the, the country, in fact, there were severe storms. And here are some pictures from what happened in Perth in February when storms lashed our coast. And when the storms of life lash your soul and threaten to breach the walls of your heart and crush your heart, I want to say to you that you can find shelter and strength in the strong arms of God. You can find protection and power in the presence of God. You know, God can keep your soul safe in every storm that life throws at you. God can heal your heart from all the hurts that come to you, from every orde ordeal that you face. God can give you peace and stability, even when the world seems to be falling apart. The next part of this song says this, Therefore we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. In the ancient world, mountains were a symbol of strength and stability, and seas were a symbol of chaos and instability. And I think thousands of years later, right up to today, those ideas are probably still true, aren't they? We see mountains as firm and secure and stable, and we see seas as potentially chaotic and dangerous. The picture in uh, this part of the song is of a terrifying natural disaster, an earthquake so severe that it destroys mountains. Now you might think, well, when has that ever happened? Actually, not so long ago. In 1883, which is a long time ago for most of us, but 1883, people here in Perth heard four huge explosions coming from over 3,000 kilometres away in Indonesia. A volcano erupted and it destroyed over 70% of the island of Krakatoa. It completely changed the landscape of that island, as you can see in this picture. You can see here that this is the island as it is today, but this is how it was before this earthquake in 1883. And so over 70% of that island was destroyed by the great volca volcanic eruption of Krakatoa. It completely changed the landscape. And the landscape of our world is changing dramatically right now. The landscape of your life is changing dramatically right now. So let me ask you this question. Where are you seeking shelter? Where are you seeking strength for these challenging times? Many people seek refuge and strength in things like work or money or perhaps their house, their home, maybe holidays. Many seek refuge in substances, in alcohol and in drugs. And uh, the purchase of alcohol has actually increased in recent weeks, as you probably know. People are seeking shelter, refuge, and comfort in these things. The problem is that these refuges that we build ourselves crumble when the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. When we lose our job, when we lose our health, when people that we love 
lose their lives. The refuges that we've built tend to fall apart. But when the serenity and the security of your life is shattered by the storms of stress and loss, God is a refuge that you can run to for protection and strength. And so I want to encourage you to seek refuge in God in this time of crisis. But there's more to the story in this song. There are two pictures in this song. The first picture is a picture of chaos and destruction, mountains falling into the heart of the sea. But the next picture, as the song goes on, is a picture of paradise and perfection. Listen to the next bit of the song. It says, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. That sounds like a great place to be, a place of safety, a place of security, a place of serenity. The question is, how do we find that place? And that leads to my second thought this morning, which is this. We need to seek a relationship with God at all times. So don't just seek God in times of crisis, but seek a relationship with God at all times. The city of God that's described here usually refers to the city of Jerusalem, traditionally the home of God's people the Jewish people, the nation of Israel. But this ancient city of Jerusalem was not actually built on a river. So what is the songwriter describing here in this part of the song? Possibly he's thinking back to the first book of the Bible and the description of creation and how God created this perfect paradise garden full of trees that were, that were beautiful to see and good to eat. And the Bible talks about how a river flowed out from Eden and broke into four headwaters. Maybe the songwriter is thinking back to, to that original creation story. Or perhaps the songwriter is thinking of the future. The Bible's full of prophecies and predictions about what will happen in the future. And one of those predictions is found in a prophet uh, by the name of Ezekiel. And Ezekiel had a vision of a time when God's temple would be restored in Jerusalem. It's no longer there in Jerusalem, but he had a vision of a time when the temple would be rebuilt, when Jerusalem would be restored, and God's people would be there. And the vision says, in part, says this, Fruit trees of all kinds will grow on both banks of the river. Their leaves will not wither, nor will their fruit fail. Every month they will bear fruit because the water from the sanctuary, from the temple, flows to them. Their fruit will serve for food and their leaves for healing. Now this vision that Ezekiel had actually sounds very much like a vision that one of Jesus' disciples had in the last book of the Bible, the book of Revelation. John had a vision of the future, of what would happen when everything came to an end, when this world ended, what would happen next? And this is some of John's vision. He says this, I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the key. Whoops, that's not the right verse. Let me get the right verse. I saw, then I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And then in the next chapter of this book of Revelation, John says this, Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, as clear, clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb, down the middle of the great street of the city, on each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing 12 crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. 
one day this chaotic world will come to an end. But when that happens, God will create a new heavens and a new earth, and in that new earth will be this wonderful new place known as the city of God, a place for his people to live. The city of God that has a river that gives life and healing to people of all nations. Now the source of that river is God himself. God calls himself the spring of living water in the Bible. The spring of living water. And God's son, Jesus Christ, when he was here, talks uh, about those ideas as well. He once was having a conversation with a woman by a well, and he talked about living water. And the woman said, where can I get this living water? Give me some of this living water. And Jesus says, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, the water of that well. But whoever drinks from the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. And then a bit later on, Jesus in another place says this, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. I want to say to you today that this new life, this living water is available to anyone who wants it. It's available to you right now. God is a refuge where you can find shelter in times of trouble. But he is also a river, a river of life, a river of healing for you, for every day. You know, if you only turn to God in times of trouble, he will quickly become just a crutch for crisis. And you won't truly get to know him. In some ways, it's easy to cry out, God help me, when we are desperate. But the big question is, when things get back to normal, and that's what we're all longing for, isn't it? When things get back to normal, whatever normal might look like, will we continue to seek God? Will we have a relationship with God? Or will we forget Him? We live in uncertain times. In times of great distress, in times where we see lots of destruction, particularly from COVID-19. But God, the God of the universe, is over and above all of these things. And God has a plan that he's working out for this planet. And that plan involves that he will ultimately destroy everything that distresses us and that distresses him. Everything that is evil, everything that is destructive in this world, everything that is wrong and chaotic and broken about this world, God will destroy that and he will bring peace to the planet. Getting back to our song in Psalm 46, listen to this next bit. The psalmist, the songwriter says, Nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall. And that seems to be happening right now, right? But then he says, he lifts his voice. That is, God lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done. The desolations he has brought on the earth. What kind of desolations does God bring? The next verse says this. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear, he burns the shields with fire. The kind of desolations that God brings are the kind that destroy evil and bring peace to this world. And the God who brings peace to this planet can most certainly bring peace to your heart. But first, something needs to happen in your heart. First, we need to do 
what the psalmist says next. Where God says, be still and know that I am God. That phrase, be still, can also be translated as cease striving or stop fighting. Now, interestingly, notice here that God is challenging the nations of the world. He's speaking to the nations of the world who are at war. And he says, be still, stop fighting and know that I'm God because I will be exalted among, among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. In other words, he's challenging the nations to recognize who he is because one day he will be seen clearly as the king of the universe in their presence, whether they acknowledge him or not. And that's a message for all of us. I think God is saying to all of us, stop fighting, cease striving, be still and know who I am. Because one day you will see me clearly for who I am, whether you acknowledge me now or not. But it's far better if you get to know me now. Be still and know who God is. So is God your refuge and your river? Do you draw near to him daily? Or are you just desperate for him in times of crisis? What will happen when things go back to normal? During this time when we are forced to stop in many ways, to be still, in many ways. I want to encourage you, I urge you to use these times to seek God, to get to know God. Now many of you who are listening probably already have a relationship with God, but if you're looking at this online and maybe you, you don't yet know God and you, 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 you have a lot of questions, I want to encourage you to send a message through Facebook, our Facebook page, uh, our YouTube, YouTube channel, uh, however you're looking at this, get a message to us. Google Craigie Baptist Church and find a way of contacting us. And I would love to be in touch with you and discuss this with you more. But for now, I'd like to pray for you. And perhaps if you've never prayed before, you might just like to pray along with me. I'm going to close my eyes. You don't have to close your eyes to pray, but, but I'm going to do that now. And I'm going to finish this message with a prayer. So let's pray. Father God, thank you that you are our refuge and strength and fortress in times of trouble. I pray that all of us hearing this message and this prayer today will know deeply in our heart that you are with us that you love us. I pray that we'll know peace, your peace, deep within. I pray that we'll know your presence in our daily lives and struggles. And I pray for everyone who's listening to this, who perhaps doesn't yet know you, that by your spirit, you would speak to them and draw them close to you. In Jesus' name. Amen.